So let's dive straight in. What are the origins of data governance? And I guess why and why is it coming more popular? I guess more critical recently. Yeah, it's it, it's a great question because originally, you know, data governance. I, I, I tell the people today, this isn't your father's data governance or even the same data governance that we talked about five years ago because. In the old days, it was very, very heavy in policy and procedure. We're going to create this little, it's very thick book of policies. And for anybody to have access to our data within the organization, they've got to sign their life away that they're going to conform to all these policies. We're going to be very rigid. And it was the power of no. And unfortunately, that fell out of favor with a lot of organizations because that simply wasn't acceptable to them. Now, organizations have realized that they want to build all these tremendous capabilities that they really want to drive analytics across their organizations. They want to be successful. In order to do that, their data has to be up for the challenge. It has to be clean. It has to be quality. And I talk to CIOs and I talk to data leaders every day and they say, I'm really trying to drive a data-driven culture within my organization. But the problem is that a lot of people in my organization don't trust our data. A lot of people in our organization don't know what the right data is to use at the right time. And those are the challenges that we're now trying to, trying to meet by bringing data governance to organizations. I often say that data governance may be misnamed sometimes, and I like to believe it's more of a data enablement function. We're trying to enable organizations to be successful with driving data-driven decisioning, with driving analytics, with driving even generative AI capabilities. And if you're unable to do that now <clears throat> with the data that you have, you've got to do something about that. And that's where I come into play. And that's where I help organizations get better with their data governments so that they can drive all those capabilities that they desire. Yeah, it's quite funny. It's just before, it wasn't much, much emphasis on this area, was there? Before, it's just, come, I think, maybe the Gen I boom is obviously trade a lot more data. It's now, obviously, you've got the data privacy. And there's a lot more critical business operations enticed in it now, isn't it? Yes. It, it, and when, when we think about it, it, so the generative AI capabilities really illuminated the challenges and the lack of maturity that a lot of organizations had, because you know, if I'm trying to bake a cake and if I just start with the, with the frosting and the buttercream and the things that, and the decorations, that's really, to me, the generative AI, AI capability, the, the really exciting stuff that you see on top of the cake. But if you haven't built that sponge appropriately, or if you haven't baked that sponge, then the whole cake falls apart. And again, you know, I, I, I tell organizations all the time, there are so many things that you can do to really make yourself successful in this endeavor. <clears throat> you have to make sure that you're driving the, the data within your organization to be trusted, to make sure that all the people that you're requesting and become self-service enabled to drive analytics from a self-service perspective so that they're using the right things at the right time. But if they don't feel comfortable with what they're using, they're never going to do it successfully. So all of these capabilities have really brought this to the front. I need generative AI. And then immediately the chief data officers and chief information officers start feeling very uncomfortable because they just can't certify. They can't be comfortable with the data that they're serving to their constituencies. Now they have to play catch up. They have to do the things that they probably should have been doing all along to make sure that they can meet the demands of their organization. And that's where we come into play again. And that's why data governance has now become such a, a more impactful topic than it was maybe a few years ago. And there's a lot of different reasons why organizations are struggling in this area. And not every organization is the same, but all of them have the same problem right now. Hey, I don't feel comfortable with the data that I'm serving to my analytics, to my data discovery environment, to my generative AI, to my LLMs. I have to do something about it. And that's why it's become much more important these days. Yeah. And then you see in, obviously, the bigger the business, the more challenging it is because of the more data they have. In some cases, yes. Uh, I think that sometimes the bigger the organization, sometimes they have some more visionary capabilities that they're trying to achieve. And, and in some cases, they may be more forward thinking, which I think is good. In, in other cases, there may be a smaller data universe, but more traditional thinking, and they haven't really understood why they're trying to do things. They haven't really gone through the transformation to become data enabled in their decision making. They're, they're still living through gut feel and analytics, and they're not really trusting analytics to really help them with making the decisions that are going to drive their business. So I'm not sure it's necessarily, hey, we've got a big boat and, and we're trying to solve the world's problems with that. Yeah. I think it's more of the culture of the organization that really drives how successful someone can be. I guess 
the biggest turn on everyone I've to speak to is their data journeys and everyone's at a different stage, I guess, how far along you are, I guess, how involved you are. No, interesting. 